Hi, this is JJ at CCBC. In this video, we'll look at the selection tool in Flash. Major topics will be the actual selection tool. The software I'm using is Adobe Flash Creative Suite version 6 on a Mac. So let's take a look at this. Here I have a Flash file with two vector shapes, a rectangle and a circle. And uh, what I want to do is select these shapes in order to work with them, make edits and changes. The way to do that is using the selection tool, which is the black arrow tool at the top of your toolbar. So I already have my selection tool selected. The way that I can select these shapes is to, one, click and drag and make a marquee selection. So it'll select everything within the area that I have now highlighted with this rectangle. So it actually selects both of these objects. Now, YouTube will compress these videos, so you probably can't see it very well, but there's a mesh that's created on top of these objects to indicate they're selected. It'll probably show better on the circle than on the rectangle, just because this is a lighter color. Um, but when you select something, it, this mesh will appear, so it's very clear that this object has been selected versus other objects. Um, you can also use the marquee selection technique to select a portion of an object. So here I'll select half the rectangle and move it apart. And here I'll select a portion of the circle and move it apart. Okay, so this isn't necessarily a good or bad thing. It's just one more technique you can use if you want to edit your shapes and you need to do some sort of cuts um, like to create a slice of pie. This would be a good technique for doing that. Um, so this is just one more thing using the marquee selection technique you can do with vector shapes. Now I'm going to undo my last two moves by just hitting Command Z and put those shapes back together. Um, another way that you can select shapes is to just click on them. Uh, but this has uh, some problems. So first I'm going to select the fill, the purple area of my rectangle. So I'll click on it once. So now it is selected. And to show you it's selected, I'll move it. So I'll click and drag up here. You'll notice the fill moved, but the stroke remained in place. Okay, so it's important to note when you click on an object, you're selecting either the stroke or the fill, but not both. Most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, you're going to want to keep the stroke and the fill together uh, because they're, they're part of the same object. There are times you'll want to separate them, but not too often. So here's how to separate them. How do we keep them together? Well, I'm going to undo this move. And in order to select both the stroke and the fill, I would double click the object. So here I have that purple fill. I'll double click. And now I've selected both the stroke and the fill. And you can see when I move the object, both of them move at the same time. Okay. One other thing you can do, just as you can single click to select the fill, you can single click to select the stroke. So if I click once on the stroke here, and then I move it, you'll notice it did select the stroke, but only one portion of the stroke was selected. Right? So I'm going to undo that move. If I double click on the stroke, and you notice when I get close to the stroke, my cursor gets a little curved arrow next to it, um, or a curved line next to the arrow. If I double click the stroke, it selects the entire stroke of the object. And you can see that when I move it. Right Again, I've now separated my stroke and my fill for this object. Well, I don't want to do that, so I'm going to undo my move. Edit undo. Um, the same technique works for the circle. Now, to deselect, I just click in the gray area. If I click on the fill of my circle, I can move it. Um, I can undo that move. If I click on the stroke of my circle just once, you notice it selects the entire stroke, okay, because it is a circle as opposed to a rectangle with clear sides. Um, I'm going to undo that move as well. And finally, if I double click my circle, it selects both the stroke and the fill, and I can move them together. Right? So those are the basic techniques for selecting. You can do the rectangular marquee selection, or you can do the click for just the stroke or the just a click for the fill or you can double click and it'll grab both the stroke and the fill and move them together. I recommend when you first start working with your vector shapes and selecting them you do a quick movement just to make sure you have both the stroke and fill selected assuming that's what you want to do because it's a very common mistake for students new to flash or new to vector uh, shapes to select one or the other and uh, not realize they didn't get the they only have the stroke, they only have the fill when they wanted to have both.
One last thing I'll show you with the selection tool. You can use it to adjust pathways. So and this rectangle has a, a point in each of the four corners to define this vector shape and a path between those points which is the side of uh, each of the four sides of this rectangle. If I click and drag you'll notice I can bend those pathways using the selection tool which is a pretty neat effect. All right? It works very well with um, shapes that have angled points because it's very obvious where the points are. Now this is a circle, there are no angled points, these are all curved points. So when I click and drag here, it's a little unpredictable how the shape is going to respond to my movements. All right, so you see how it's hard to say how it's going to bend, and it takes a little bit of practice. This isn't the most ideal way to adjust curved shapes. Um, it's a nice way to manipulate uh, shapes with straight sides, like a rectangle. So it's just one more thing that you can do with the selection tool. So that covers it for this video. Hope you learned something. See you in the next one.